In this holiday weekend video, we'll cover a handful of chart patterns and ask, what are they telling us about stocks and the economy? These are some of the markets we'll be covering. If you'd like to read this list in more detail, you can pause your video player in the lower right-hand corner. More specifically, we'll look at the long-term NYSE composite chart that we've looked at in the past, Look at cup and handle patterns, inverted head and shoulders, and some multiple year consolidation patterns that are changing. We'll also check in with the present day readings of the CCM market model. To view the video in full screen mode, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. To improve the clarity of the charts, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. This is the S&P 500 on April 11th. Had a lot of weakness here in the first few months of the year. Things are looking pretty shaky here on April 11th and the market model recommends an exposure of 33% on the equity side and 67% on the conservative side. The odds are questionable here. As the observable evidence begins to improve during this 170 point gain in the S&P 500, the model incrementally increases our exposure to risk. A week ago, we were at 92.8 on 627. As of the close on July 2nd, we were at 96.4. The last offensive move we made was on April 11th. We've been making growth oriented moves since then, which has worked out well, the gain on the S&P 500 from April 11th until the close on July 3rd was 170 points. So by using observable evidence rather than forecasting or listening to talking heads, we were able to capture a good portion of this 170 point gain in the stock market. This is a long term chart of the NYSC composite Index, it's a weekly chart. This is 2006. This is the present day in 2014. You can see we have a long-term consolidation or sideways pattern. We've been showing this chart several times during calendar year 2014. And we keep saying it's very difficult to interpret this in any other way other than bullish. We have resistance, 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 a bullish breakout, and a bullish breakout, a retest, and now we're going on and making a higher high. As long as we remain above this level here, this is a bullish chart from a probabilistic perspective. This is a weekly chart of the EEM or Emerging Markets ETF. Resistance, 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 resistance. Bullish breakout in 2014. This is a three year consolidation pattern here. You can even make a case from a conceptual perspective that this is somewhat of a cup and handle look. As long as we remain above this blue line, the probability of good things happening is better here than it was here. The market model doesn't trade chart patterns. However, they can serve as a way to confirm what the model is telling us, this is Asia X Japan, the AA XJ ETF. Conceptually, you've got what's known as an inverted head and shoulders here. This is fear, a rally, a spike in fear makes the head, and then another bout of fear, but making a higher low relative to this low. Here's your left shoulder, your head, your right shoulder. This is known as the neckline, resistance, resistance, bullish breakout, and we're holding above. Biotech stocks tend to be higher beta because sometimes they're hit or miss. If your technology is a winner, your stock can go through the roof. And if your technology is a dud or can't clear regulatory hurdles, your stock could tank. So it tells us a little bit about risk tolerance. You can see biotech, IBB, was doing quite well here, but like many stocks in the early part of the year, it was hesitant 
and went into a downtrend. Now we have a reversal, and to get a reversal from a downtrend on a weekly chart to an uptrend, three things have to happen. We have to break a downward sloping trend line as we did right here. Then we have to make a higher low. This low here is higher than this low here. And then we have to go on and make a higher high. This high here is higher than the previous high here. Step one, step two, step three. Now we have a clearly defined bullish trend in biotech stocks. The improvement was visible and observable beginning around the same time that the market model started to ramp up our allocations in mid-April of this year. Should be noted that we're not advocating buying these chart patterns, nor are we saying that we own these ETFs. The purpose of the exercise here is the market model is telling us that conditions are currently favorable. It will tell us anything about the future. These chart patterns tend to confirm that they are also sending bullish signals. This is another foreign ETF, the EPP. This is what's known as a cup and handle pattern on the weekly chart. This is a spike in fear as it dropped here in mid-year 2013. This is your cup. Then we get another spike in fear. In 2014, we reach a bottom. The handle is a lower spike in fear, shaking out the last bit of pessimism. Resistance, resistance on the rim. After the handle, we got a bullish breakout. As long as we stay above the rim, all things being equal, it's good for EPP. Shifting gears back to the United States, this is the XLY, or the Consumer Discretionary ETF, Think economically sensitive stocks, consolidation, indecisiveness in 2014, bullish breakout here recently, which is a good sign, and we also have our cup and our handle. If you want to learn more about the relevance of this and this, you can Google this title here and find this article either on Seeking Alpha or on our blog. You can always read these articles on our blog, Short Takes, without having to register. If you're not registered on Seeking Alpha, it tells you a little bit more about the psychology behind a cup and handle as well. If you're a CCM client, you know that we've owned some treasuries or TLT this year. You also know that we've been reducing that exposure and did so again this week for the third time. Why did we own it? TLT relative to the S&P 500. We have a bullish, full bore bullish look here in favor of treasuries. Hence the reason why we own it based upon observable evidence. But this is really an indecisive look. We've had a very indecisive year in terms of risk off relative to risk on. But recently, beginning in mid-April here, it started to turn in favor of stocks over bonds. We get a bearish moving average crossover. We've gone from a full bore bullish look in favor of treasuries to a full bore bearish look against treasuries. We have our three steps for a trend change in the other direction here. Step one, we broke the trend line. Step two, we made a lower high. And step three, the ratio has now made a clear lower low favoring stocks over bonds. Another cup and handle that's relatively easy to spot on Australia, and Australia is a resource dependent country and has a tendency to do better when the economy is stronger because resources are in greater demand. Here's your cup, here's your handle, here's your bullish breakout. We also have a bullish moving average crossover and a full bore bullish look on the weekly chart of EWA. As long as you stay above the rim here, the probability of good things happening here is better than it was here or here. If you want to do some studying to try to improve your game plan 
over the holiday weekend on our Twitter feed, you can find this link here, which will take you to an article on building if-then systems. You can also Google this title here to find it on short takes or Seeking Alpha. This is a weekly chart of the OIH or Oil Services ETF. It invests in oil service related equities. Remember earlier in the video we had a long-term consolidation and a bullish breakout in the Emerging Markets ETF. This is a similar situation. We have resistance dating back to 2011 here. Resistance here again in 2011. Here we have a bullish breakout. What once was resistance may now act as support. This is known as a retest of the breakout. A successful retest, I might add, followed by a higher high here. You can even make an argument that this has a little bit of a cup and handle look to it. Here's your cup. Here's your handle. Bullish breakout. And now we've even cleared the resistance level from 2011 here and we have a full bore bullish look on the weekly chart of OIH which tells us something about the economy as well. The longer you consolidate or go through an indecisive period from a probabilistic perspective, the bigger the move you can expect once we get a breakout in one direction or another. For now, we have a bullish breakout. Breakouts can fail, so we always have to keep an open mind. But for now, this is a good sign for energy stocks and the broader global economy. This is weekly small caps in the United States. We've got a full bore bearish look as things were looking shaky in the United States here earlier in 2014. Resistance, resistance bullish breakout, bullish moving average crossover, and a full bore bullish look for small caps that remains as of the close on Thursday, July 3rd, 2014. If we can find a broad brush stroke of bullish chart patterns from a probabilistic perspective in the equity markets, or in growth-oriented stocks. What is the bond market telling us or defensive ETFs? This is the AGG ETF. It's a diversified basket of bonds or fixed income instruments. You can see it was in an uptrend here. Step one to change the trend. It broke this upward sloping trend line. Step two, you have to make a lower high. This high here is lower than the previous high here. Step three to confirm the trend change from a probability perspective is to make a lower low. This low here is lower than this low here. We still don't have a bearish moving average crossover on this chart, but we do have signs of a possible trend change in a diversified basket of bonds or defensive instruments. How do we track all of this and convert it into a usable and actionable format in a reasonable amount of time? The sub-models, we answer binary questions, some of them manually done, some of them programmed in Excel, and we also enter in unbiased and hard data. The sub-models allow us to get a handle on the market's current profile, and the master CCM market model then looks at the current profile, compares it to past profiles, and recommends a prudent allocation between risk assets such as stocks and conservative assets such as bonds. Conservative assets can consist of cash, bonds, currencies, or any number of investment options. If you'd like to learn more about the market model or our money management services, you can visit our website Follow along on Twitter, Facebook, read our blog, Short Takes, or watch past videos on the Shivako Capital Channel on YouTube. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes. 
and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivaco Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.